Well, you just heard from Innes Willocks. It is hard to escape the conclusion that what the nation needs are not summits and talk fests, but decisions. Put brutally and simply, people are going broke. I read recently of a third generation farmer on the central coast of New South Wales, and there are thousands across Australia in his predicament, labour shortages. He can't find people to pick the oranges and lemons and limes for his juice company. It's all done by hand, so with a lack of staff, the crop falls to the ground. The farmer rightly said, and this is happening everywhere, and I quote, people come in for interviews, we offer them the job, and they don't show up the next day. Tell me about it, happens here. It doesn't matter what industry, agriculture, horticulture, hospitality, it's diabolical. You and I see this every day in cafes, pubs, restaurants across Australia, crying out for staff. Only two ways out of this. First, reduce the hours of the business, or second, shut the business. The point is, as I said to Innes, there are 892,000 Australians receiving job seeker and youth allowance payments, and businesses can't employ people. You can have a summit every day of the week, but the new government has to understand that the voter progressively is seeing that while government is big and bloated, where it's wanted, it's useless. That's why 66% of voters didn't vote for the Labor Party, and it was much the same for the coalition, big, bloated, bureaucratic and useless. Tomorrow, there'll still be a massive shortage of workers and there'll be nothing different next week. You see, the problems that the government won't address are everywhere. Rick has written to me and he said this, quote, I'm a beef producer in central Victoria. I've been following Zali Stegall recently and I've attempted to ask her what I believe are serious questions, but as yet, I've had no response. In our region, we are inundated with wind farms and now a new 500 acre solar farm is to be built. The turbines are located atop many hills in our region, spoiling what was once pristine views and mountain profiles. My question, he said to Zali Stegall, was, why are there no turbines or no commitment to build turbines in her waterfront electorate? Unquote. There we are, we showed you that picture before, see? He says, there's been a mock-up picture of Manly Beach, that's it, lined with turbines along the coastline. He said, I know most laugh at this, how can anyone dream of doing that? Ask Rick, why? Why is it okay to put these monstrosities in my backyard, but not hers? What is the difference, Rick says? Why is her environment more valuable than mine? He said, I'm tired of these inner city planet savers crying for renewables, but getting shocked when it's suggested that they build some in their electorates. He said, I've got swimming friends around Brighton and Mentone beaches in Victoria who are absolutely gobsmacked when I suggest wind farms in Port Phillip Bay or along the coastline, unquote. Well, can anyone in government answer Rick's simple question? Why is their environment more valuable than his?